Within this video, we're gonna talk about navigation inside of the viewport inside of Unreal Engine. As a bonus, we're actually going to show you how to bring in a model from Sketchfab. So first, let's take a look at what we're actually gonna be doing. So here inside of this world, you can see there's not really much going on, but if I zoom out a little ways, you'll begin to see we have got a bunch of rings and we're quite literally going to be jumping through hoops. And this is a great way to get somebody used to navigating inside of the Unreal Engine. And when it comes to navigation, there are actually three main types of navigation inside of the Unreal Engine. Now, the PDF that you see here will be linked down in the description. So just grab it, use it, print it off, put it in your classroom. It's fantastic. So let's talk about the kind of pros and cons of each one. So we have our standard navigation. Now, standard navigation is great for beginners. This is like the default way to get around inside of the Unreal Engine. So absolutely get used to it. And it only takes a mouse. You don't have to use the keyboard at all, which is absolutely awesome. It's good for getting around inside of like small spaces. Think of like inside of buildings or down hallways as you're building worlds and levels. This works really well. Some of the cons though, it can be kind of slow to get around in really large areas. Now there is a way kind of around that, but by default, I usually don't use it for getting around like, you know, giant fields. Like it's just not going to work. Now our game navigation, this one is going to feel very, very, very familiar for anybody that's played any kind of video game on a con for any kind of video game on a PC, specifically something like Fortnite. This is going to feel perfect. You're going to be like, oh, this is exactly the same, except for if you're used to Fortnite, your ups and your downs are going to be a little bit different. So just be aware of that one. Um, it's a little bit harder for people that use controllers to get around and you can actually use a controller to get around inside of the Unreal Engine while you're editing. So that's something that you may want to do if you're used to that. Um, it's okay for small spaces. Again, kind of like standard navigation, there's kind of a way around this and I'll show you how to do that. Um, it's just one extra little step that you have to kind of deal with. Now, the last one we have down here is this orbit pan and zoom. Um, this is excellent for actually focusing on, on a specific object. You're like, oh, I need to go check out that tree. Well, you can just zoom over to it and then like kind of orbit around it. It's 100% the best way to do that. Um, it's not so good for getting around though, whether small or large spaces. In fact, it's really, really small low and it's just like, ugh, like it's just painful. So it's really used for just kind of focusing in. Now I use each of these interchangeably constantly inside of the Unreal Engine and it's just something you kind of get used to over time. So this video is going to kind of help you get used to specifically the game navigation, which is going to be a great kind of intermediate direction that you want to go with. I will talk about the others as well, but specifically this model that we're going to be using is going to use the game navigation to get from one place to another, which is that nice medium ground. Now the model we're going to be using is actually coming from Sketchfab and I'll be 100% honest with you, there are times when what's on the front page are not safe for work or for school. So be sure to grab this model before you go into the classroom. It's just going to save some giggles. First off, let's actually just find said model. So I'm just going to go up into my search bar right up here at the top and I'm going to type in jump through hoops. And you can add the dash twin motion at the end of it, just in case you're getting a thousand different things that are popping up. And this is said model. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this model and you're going to be greeted with a new window. And you can, of course, just click and drag in here. And this is what we're going to be bringing in. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here just a little ways. And what you're looking for over here is this download 3D model. So you can go ahead and just click on that. You're going to get another little pop up. And what we're looking for is this button right here. And we want to go ahead and download this FBX format. Go ahead and just click on that and choose where you want to actually download this. With the model now downloaded, we need to go ahead and actually unzip this, uncompress it. So I'm just going to right click on this. I'm on Windows. I'll just say extract all or use whatever method you need to. And go ahead and just say extract or unzip, uncompress, and you'll get a new folder. Inside of this folder, we have a source folder. Inside of the source folder, we actually have the model that we need. Now, getting this into Unreal is like dirt easy. Now, what I'm gonna do is just come down here to the content drawer and open this up. And I do already have a folder in here for static meshes. You can see this. You don't necessarily need this, but I do like to keep things nice and organized. So with this up here on the right, all I'm gonna do is just drag and drop this into my content drawer and let go. And Unreal is gonna say, hey, this is an FBX. What do you want me to do with it? There's a couple of things that are very important here. So first and foremost, this third checkbox, it actually says generate missing collision. Um, we're gonna make sure that this is toggled off. We do not want this to actually create collision. Otherwise, we're gonna have a hard time actually flying through the hoops. There's that one. Now, if we come down here to the material section, we have this search location. I've actually got this set to do not search. I don't want you to look for any kind of materials. And, but I do want you to go ahead and import the materials and create new ones for the one that's coming in, okay? So real quick, there are three things that we wanna worry about. Generate collision, don't search for materials, but do create new materials. And then you can either click import or import all. In this case, either button is going to do the exact same thing. I'll just go ahead and say import. This will take a minute. Now, if I actually open up my content drawer, we see we have our jump through hoops 
and we have a red material and we have a yellow material. Really all we're worried about is this one, but you can change these colors just in case you wanna change the colors on the hoops. So there's that. Now, all I need to do is just click and drag this into my world and I'll let go. And where did it go? That's really weird. Now it is actually selected and I can tell that one, because I have a gizmo that's showing up here. And two, I actually have a jump through hoops right here. You see, I actually have two of them in here, that's fine. With this one selected, I'm just going to right mouse click and drag in here so I can actually kind of look around. If I look up, I can actually see that model right? Like, hey, there it is. So I'm just using my right mouse button to look around. Now, this is the first navigation that I was talking about. Just holding the right mouse and clicking and dragging allows you to basically turn your head. So let's talk about some of the other standard navigations. That first one, if I hold the left mouse and I click and drag, if I push away from myself, I actually start to move forward. And you can see I'm basically just moving along a plane. And if I pull backwards, I'm actually just moving backwards. Now, if I still holding the left mouse button, I'm gonna to look to my left by actually moving the mouse to the left. And if I move my mouse to the right, I can actually move my mouse to the right. So this allows me to look around and basically kind of scoot. I think it's gonna, I feel like scoot, 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 right? So I can kind of just scoot, pick up my mouse and scoot some more, and then pick up my mouse and then scoot some more. But you'll notice that this is a little bit low. Like I'm like, I can't get into it, right? Well. There's an actually easy way to deal with this. Again, standard navigation. I'm just gonna hold left mouse and right mouse. And if I push away from myself, I'll begin to ascend. And if I pull toward myself with the mouse, I begin to actually descend. So I can kind of line myself up. Now, while I'm still holding the right and the left mouse button, if I move to the left, you'll see that I basically pan left and right. So this is like the standard navigation. So I can kind of turn myself, hold left and right mouse, so I can kind of pan over. And then if I hold just the left mouse and push myself forward. so. Quite literally, I want you to pause the video and just kind of get used to this because it's going to get really weird really, really quick if you're not used to it. And what I also want you to do before you pause the video, sorry, I told you to do that first. What I want you to do is while you're kind of looking around in here, if you press the one key on the keyboard, it'll actually send you back to where we started inside of any level inside of Unreal within its templates. There's just kind of a default bookmark that'll actually send you to that one location. So go ahead and play with that standard navigation before you move on. Okay, I really hope you took some time to play with it because seriously, if we don't get this figured out, you're gonna have a really hard time inside of Unreal and it's gonna become frustrating and we don't want that. As much as we can help, we don't want it to be frustrating. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and talk about the actual game navigation. So to do this, it actually kind of starts the same. I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button and I'm just gonna kind of look around. I'm like, oh cool, that's really nice. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to use the A, S, D, and W keys on my keyboard. And you can also use the up, down, and left, right arrows. They'll behave a little bit different, but they get basically the same setup. So if I use the W key on the keyboard, you'll see that I actually move forward. And it's actually moving forward in the direction that my camera is facing. So if I turn and look at this corner, I can actually hold W and that mouse button and just kind of move forward. I'm really not even thinking about what's going on with the mouse. I'm just thinking about what's going on with my left hand, with the A, S, and D, W. Now, if I use the S key, I can actually go backwards, which is great. So I'm basically just going away from what the camera is looking at, which is awesome. So if I look at the ground, and I press S, I'll actually be going away from it, which is great. Now the other keys, A and D, if I press the A key while holding down the right mouse, I'm still holding on to it, I can actually kind of basically pan to the left or strafe if you're used to video games and D will allow you to do the same thing the other direction. So using these, I can actually kind of navigate my way down to an object and if I just kind of keep focusing my camera at it, I'm just holding down the right mouse button. You can see I can jump through these really, really quickly. Well, pretty quickly anyways. Now, if you're finding it, speaking of quickly, really too fast and you wanna slow it down, we can do that. If you look up here in the top right-hand corner, you'll find a little icon that looks like a camera. You'll notice that there's a number four in it. That four is the speed at which we're moving. So if I click on this, I can actually change this little slider right here to make it move very, very fast or very, very slow. So if you need to slow it down, that's totally fine. Come up here and actually change this. That's what this thing is for. I often find if I'm building environments, I'm usually around like two or three. And if I'm flying through really large worlds, I'm usually around five, six or seven. And you will notice how fast you now move. Whoa, really, really, really quickly. Okay, so let's actually turn that back down to four. Actually, let's go down to three. I'm gonna press the one key on the keyboard to kind of reset everything. So we talked about being able to move forward, backwards, and left and right. Now, if I hold down the right mouse button, let's talk about ascending and descending because that's also another thing that we can do. If I hold the Q key on the keyboard, I can actually go straight down. And if I hold down the E key on the keyboard and still holding the right mouse button, I can go straight up. 
So this ASDW also does include the Q and the E keys. So there's your game navigation. Now, I really do want you to take a moment and actually see if you can get through these. Now, if you're a gamer, you're gonna probably try and hold down the shift key and you'll notice that you completely and totally stop. That's a feature, not a bug. Okay, let's talk about something that may be happening to you at this point and you're freaking out and you're like, what just happened, right? Well, you're actually clicking stuff inside of the viewport and you can left mouse click on any of the things and you can select them. And you're like, well, I don't want the floor selected. So you go to click in the background. You're like, cool, now I have the background selected. Well, actually what's just happened is you've selected the sky sphere. Okay, this is problematic. <laughs> if we want to unselect it, hold your control key and left mouse click on it and that will unselect it. And you can see over here, now it's unselected. So selecting an object and unselecting an object becomes very important. And I'm about to show you why, because this last set of navigation becomes really, really important when you just trust me. <laughs> so I'm going to select it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit my favorite F word. I love this F word. I use it in the classroom all the time. And it's frame. F-R-A-M- E. And if I could write and draw and spell with a mouse, that's horrible. Frame. Now, if I press the actual F key on the keyboard and I have this background selected, this is the problem. And you're like, ah, oh, frame. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Where in the world am I? Well, actually what's happened is this is the sky sphere and this is just like clouds in the background and your world is about mm, that big. It's tiny. It's itty bitty inside of there. So like, well, great. Now how do I get back to that location, right? Well, all you have to do, remember we talked about this earlier, just press the one key on the keyboard and you'll zip right back down to where you were. So that F key will frame any object that you've actually selected. We have that sky sphere selected. So when I press F, it zooms me all the way out there. Now over here on the right hand side, if we scroll down, we can actually find that jump through hoops. There it is right there. And if I press F now, it'll actually zoom me back down to it, which is really, really helpful, okay? So this F key will frame the object that happens to be selected or multiple objects if they happen to be selected. Use it and abuse it. This is like the best thing. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because this final navigation uses this as the first step. This is an order of operation. First, frame it, <laughs> frame it real good, right? So hit F. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the Alt key on the keyboard. And while holding that, I'm going to left mouse click and drag. And what I'm doing is I'm orbiting around the selected object that I have framed first. Frame it first, frame it real good. And then hold down Alt and left mouse click. I can also do this, if I can get a hold of one of these little blocks down here, there we go, I'll press F. And then I will go ahead and alt and left mouse click and I can orbit around this object, right? Now I'm really, really close to it and I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is without holding any other keys on the keyboard, I'm just gonna use my scroll wheel and I'm going to pull it back toward myself and I can zoom out and I can zoom in using it. So this becomes really, really helpful. So I can alt left mouse click to kind of drag around it. And I'm like, cool, now I can kind of see what's going on. So being able to orbit, pan, and zoom this way is really nice. Now, if I hold down Alt and I use my right mouse, what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna be zooming in and I would rather use the scroll wheel, let's be honest. So if I Alt and middle mouse, I can actually pan. Now, I'm not using the scroll wheel, I'm just pushing the scroll wheel or the middle mouse in and this allows me to pan. Okay, so that's important. I can also pan up and down too. I don't use this one too often, but it's definitely good to know about it. So there are your three different kinds of navigations inside of the Unreal Engine. At this point, what I really, really, really would love to see you do is actually get yourself turned around and figure out which navigation system works best for you as you try and zoom in and zoom through each one of these hoops. So we wanna start at the bottom yellow one here and we'll make our way all the way up. It just makes a big spiral all the way to the one up there at the very top. And then try and go back down through it. I cannot stress this enough. Navigation inside of this program is 90% of the first challenge that both teachers and students run into. If you can get this down, your world will be a hundred times easier. And the fastest way to get from one location to the next is to look at something, select it, press the F key, and then you'll be there immediately. And then you can just kind of work your way around from that specific point and location in space. So. If you've got any more questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need to clear it up, go ahead and drop a comment down below and I will get to you when I get the chance.